eyes of the world are on Switzerland, the historic face-to-face -face meeting between Iran and the United States and five other nations. The question, can anything stop Iran from building nuclear weapons? All the countries involved agreed to meet again later this month, and President Obama called the talks a constructive beginning. But was anything really accomplished? Former Secretary of State Lawrence Eagleburger went on the record. Mr. Secretary, nice to see you, sir. Good to be here. And uh, thank you for agreeing to sit down with us. It's my pleasure. Top of the news today, Iran. What do you think about uh, the United States meeting face-to-face -face with Iran, and is, do you have any expectations or high hopes for this? I have no expectations or high hopes for it. I don't mind that they met, although I think there will be a lot of people who are going to complain about that. <clears throat> but I, I think it was okay. I just don't think anything's going to come of it, because I don't think Iran intends any sort of a compromise. So what do we do? I know what I would do, but that's not what we will do. I think what's my own guess is at this stage, when it's over, Iran will have built its bomb. Uh, there may or may not be some sanctions imposed for a while, but not by enough countries to make a difference. And we will, when this is all over, we'll have another nation that's in the list of the, in nuclear powers, and it'll be Iran. I think that's what's going to happen. What would you do? I would have, first of all, I would have made it very clear to the Chinese and the Russians that if they didn't join us in meaningful sanctions, we were going to hold it against them in every way we could. In other words, I, you can't force them to do it. But I don't personally understand why the Chinese and the Russians don't, both of them understand that another nuclear power in the list of, na of nations is not going to help them any more than it helps us. It's a danger to everybody, and they ought to understand that. But I don't think they do. I would do my best to get sanctions that would really make a difference, because I think, in fact, if you impose the right kinds of sanctions, we probably could force the Iranians to stop. If, on the other hand, that didn't work, I myself believe it is worth military action to stop it. I, I would go whatever way is necessary. I, and again, I have to say, I suspect in the end it would be just the United States that would be willing to impose the military op option on this. And I don't think this administration is ever going to be prepared to do that, so I don't think we'll do it. But I think the issue is so important that it needs to be stopped. Where the mis real mistake was made was to permit the North Koreans to do it. Once they had, done, had accomplished this, this matter of getting a bomb, uh, you opened the door wide if we had made it clear from the very beginning that we were not going to tolerate another nuclear power on the face of the earth and had done it in, in Korea where we could have accomplished it militarily if necessary. I would put a stop to it, would have put a stop to it there. But what I'm saying is because we let them do it, I think we'll end up letting the Iranians do it. And the issue is going to be then what do we do next? And all, we, all I can say at that stage is that we're going to have some nuclear nation sometime along the way uh, that's going to, to pop off a bomb, and then where will we be? I don't know. I think it's a mess, and I don't like the way it's going. Just curious, um, in terms of if you had to sit down and negotiate with either the Chinese or the Russians, who would you rather negotiate with? Chinese. Really? Why? They'd be more rational. Than the Russians? I think so, yeah. Now, mind you, I don't think in either case it's going to be easy. And I frankly don't think there's going to be much of any way we can persuade either country to join us in meaningful sanctions. I think that's almost impossible. But for reasons that have very little to do with the substance of whether Iran becomes a nuclear power or not. Which brings us then to the, the other suggestion, or the last one that you said, military action. It's what I would do, but we'll never do it. All right. Um, why will we never do it, and why would you do it? I would do it because I think that, again, if we, if we don't draw a line, and we should have drawn it with Korea, but if we don't draw a line in the sand that says no longer are we going to tolerate, we or the community of nations are going to tolerate another nuclear power, and in, in, now it's ending up in the hands of small countries that have nowhere near the desire to concern themselves about a, a global peace than, uh, than we in the United States or any number of countries have. But I mean, you can you, what does North Korea lose, for example, out of firing a bomb off somewhere uh, in terms of its impact on global peace? They, that's not their issue. It is for us, it is for the British, the Germans, you name them. It ought to be for the Russians and for the Chinese. I, as I say, I'm 
I'm frustrated that they don't seem to see it this way. But the fact of the matter is that I think that this issue is important enough that you should, we should be prepared, if necessary, to use military force. And with, uh, hopefully, again, in conjunction with, with some allies. But I'm not at all sure they will join us. And I, they, we won't do it. I'll tell you that right now. All right. You say we won't do it. Um, why won't we do it? This administration doesn't look at things that way. I'm not sure there's much of any administration that would look on it this way. Although I, I think there are some who understand that this is an issue not just of Iran, but of the whole future of the world, if you will, and that if we don't stop it now, we'll never stop it. If you, the consequence of a world full of nuclear powers to me is so incomprehensible in terms of the dangers that that implies. One nuclear war is going to be the last nuclear, the last war, frankly, if it really gets out of hand. And I just don't think we ought to be prepared to accept that sort of thing. But if, if I'm not at all sure that there are very many people that look on this as, as being as terribly dangerous as I do. So I may be exaggerating the whole thing, but I just don't think we can tolerate it.